your Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter 6, if you would. Ephesians chapter 6. And I've got a lot as usual. I'm pretty sure I've got more notes than I've got time. Uh, by the way, I checked the radar uh, between Sunday school and church. And um, that snow is on its way. And they talked like some of it would hit this morning. And up north, north of St. Louis it is. Um, but the air is dry. If you went, noticed when you went out this morning, you didn't have a car full of frost. And that means the air is dry and it takes a little while to push that dry air out of the way. Uh, I got tickled. There is a town in um, Siberia. It's a village in northern Siberia. They have the world's record low temperature. Um, and it ended up being minus 95 or 97 Fahrenheit. That put it about minus 70 something Celsius. And believe it or not, the people that live up there, even when it's like 30 below, 40 below, they hang their clothes out on the line. Because after it freezes, it dries. Because the air is so dry up there, it's like a desert till it snows. And this one guy, he washed his underwear, took him out, hung him out for about 10 minutes, and he went out there and pulled him up like that. Of course, they stood up, you know. And he just like ripped, it's just like ripping a piece of paper. They just ripped right in half. After about 10 minutes up there. So I asked Callie if it felt like Minnesota. And she said, yeah, it does. More like, more like what it used to be. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Are you there? Say amen. I want you to have your Bibles open. In, um, let me start the message out this way. I... Mentioned to a pastor friend of mine yesterday. He told me he loved me and was praying for me. And I told him, I said, if you'd have known me years ago, you'd have hated my guts. And I said, um, when I look back at myself at that time, I hate my guts. I was running from the truth. I was running from it. Maybe, maybe you've been there. Maybe you've experienced that. Where you ran. You were like Jonah. God called you. And God had something for you to do. And you ran from it. You tried to hide from God. And I was running from a truth that I did not want to face. And God made sure that I got to a point in my life where he literally locked me in to where I couldn't run anymore. I tell the story of in Exodus 14 where God clearly led the Israelites in a different direction than where they were going. He told them, turn. And instead of going just straight up into the land of promise, God had a different path for them to go. But God was going to make them face the music. He was going to make them face trusting Him. So He led them over to the Red Sea, held them there, went and got Pharaoh. If you study the Scriptures, you'll see that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. God did it. God pulled Pharaoh over there. Pharaoh came through the only lane in that whole area. Here's Israel camped on the beach. Here's the Red Sea. Here's the man. And he's not going to put them back in bondage. He's going to kill every one of them. That he represents your sin, your past, the life that you used to live when you were in bondage. And why? And if you think about it, God led them to a trap. And he forced them into a place, Gary, where they had no choice but to follow God. They had no choice. 
They couldn't, they, they couldn't say, well, let's go back to Egypt. Maybe Pharaoh, maybe he'll just put us back to work. Pharaoh was going to kill him and they knew it. God was holding him back with the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. But they had the Red Sea. They complained and murmured to God. And God told Moses, he said, you just stand back and watch what I do. And God opened up the way. And the very thing that God used to save them is what he used to destroy their enemies. Now, they would have never thought of that. And at the time, I was running from God. I was running from the truth. And God put me in a situation exactly like that. And what I didn't know was the very thing that God was going to use to save me, He was going to use to destroy the things that were killing me. And I didn't know that. But I came to a place, and I will never forget it as long as I live. We sing a song called, I am resolved no longer to linger. Well, I learned what that word resolved meant. And I told some people back then, I said, I have resolve. And what that means to me is, at this point, I don't care what God chooses to do as long as God does it. But I remember he used that to force me into his word. And that day I began to just read scriptures. And you think, well, you're the preacher. It's what you're supposed to do. I hadn't learned that then. I was still a young man. And I started reading scriptures. And I started looking at that. And I, I would do this. I would be in my office and I would be pointing to verses. And I would say, God, you said that. And God, you don't lie. And if you don't do this, if you... If you don't do this for me, I'm dead. And I can tell you that the things that God, that I was reading that day, God not only did for me then, but He's been doing it for me every day since then. And I, I got to a point where... I, I was asking God, God, show me the truth. I, I tell this story a lot. 1997 is when God spoke to my heart. Mike, we're going to study prophecy. Great. There's some new prophecy books. I've noticed on the Christian bookstore, I was going to go buy them. And God said, don't you dare. I wrote one. And I went. He did. And I'm not kidding you. I went, duh. And that was, if you remember, I've said this, that was the time where I would read the prophecy books and where they would quote scripture. I'd skip over the scripture. I'd say, I already know that. I want to see what he has to say. Now I'm the exact opposite. You hand me a book. I'm going to open it up and find, first of all, I'm going to find out what Bible it's using. Then, I'm going to read the scriptures out of it first. I don't care what anybody else says. I want to hear what God says. God just turned me around that day. Now, as I start this, I'm telling you right now, I don't know everything. And I have good friends in the ministry. That if we sat down and started talking about all things that we didn't agree with each other, we'd probably end up fighting. So I just, when I don't have very many friends in ministry. I just don't. So I make it a point, I don't ever get into it with them on something I disagree with them on. I, they're, they're my friends. I, I, I need my friends. Now, so that's me understanding that I don't know everything. And I know for a fact, and I will read it to you in a minute, that there are some things that I think that are probably not true. But if I knew they were not true, 
I wouldn't think them anymore. I would think the opposite. I would think whatever God showed me, I, that's what I would think. And I understand that God doesn't make us all exactly the same. God doesn't make us all exactly believe everything identical. He uses us in different ways for different purposes. Every ch Our church is different than Brother Reg Kelly's church, and Brother Jason Cooley's church, and Mike Hutzel's church, and some of these other guys, John Uter. Our church is different from their church. Our church is different from the churches that are in Kenya. I don't know why in the world they listen to me over there. Some of them must think I'm crazy. Well, some of them do think I'm crazy. But when it comes to truth, there is a truth, a single truth, that you must believe or you'll die and go to hell. So in Ephesians chapter 6, let's read this together. Uh, let's start, I have it up on the screen, verse 10, let's start there. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of whose might? His. Do you know why His? Because you don't have any. Put on the whole armor of God. So that means if you are missing one, where is the devil going to aim? Where is he going to aim? Caleb, if you go out on the football field and you're not wearing your helmet... The guy that you're standing up against, where's he going to knock you at? Where the helmet ain't. Take on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's what we sing in a while ago. For Satan's darts at me are hurled. And I said, think about that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Remember those four. They're always targeting the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The truth. And what the gospel is. And let me say this. I want everybody listening. I want everybody online. I want everybody here listening. There is nothing more important for me, as pastor of Bethel Church, to say, speak, or preach about than the gospel of how a sinner can spend eternal life in heaven. Nothing trumps that. Not even Trump trumps that. Are you hearing me? I get pulled from people all over the place who want me. They're tugging at me. Pastor, we think you ought to talk about this. Pastor, we think you ought to look into this and say about this. Pastor, we want you to... And I've had people use their money that they sent in as a means to get to me to tell me what they think I ought to be preaching. I despise that. I hate that. Don't you ever, don't you ever think that you can send in any amount of money to this place. And let me stop right here and tell you what I'm really afraid of. What I'm really afraid of. We've got ourselves embedded now in Kenya. And God's really blessed that. And we are making plans for a permanent place to distribute food and water. Now, none of that, we don't get the food donated to us. That guy that sells us the corn, he loves to see our guys coming. He's going, ching! Fixing to make me some more money here. We don't get that given to us for free. We have to buy that. We have to buy the corn, we have to buy the beans, we have to buy the salt, we have to buy the oil. Now we're going to start adding sugar to it. When we get the place, we're going to try to dig a well, put a community well in so that we can give out water and food, same place. That's going to cost us. Here's my fear. 
that I'm going to I'm going to say something that God in this book is telling me to say. And all these people on the internet that are helping us out, all of a sudden, they hate my guts. And we're going to let all those people in Kenya go hungry. That scares me. It scares me. So I'm going to say this. And I'm going to, I'm going to back up and I'm going to say it in a different tone. I'm going to say it in love. Please don't ever... Send us any money and think that you can tell me what to say. Please don't ever do that. Because it's been done before. It's been tried before. I've had people write letters telling me, now, we give such and such. I've had people tell me on the phone, now, I give such and such. Don't ever tell me that. I don't care. Who gives what? I'm not supposed to know who gives what. Do you, and I haven't said this in a long time, but when these guys take it up the offering, what am I doing? I'm not watching you putting anything in either. I don't, I'm not supposed to know that. Do you know why I'm not supposed to know that? Because if I happen to know what your sins are, it's my job to preach on them. And I, I can't be affected by whether or not you put something in the offering plate or not. So it, yeah, I worry. I worry. Let me finish the scripture. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, they are always going to attack you. Always. Till the day you die. How many of y'all know that? Say amen. And then he said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. He said, stand, therefore. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a series on each one of these. And the first thing that he said was having your loins girt about with what? Truth. So today... And maybe next Sunday morning, I don't know. I'm going to preach on the truth. And I'm going to tell you that you don't know it all. Is what I'm going to tell you. And I have said some things in the last several days that have angered some people. And I am not backing up on what I said. I'm not, I'm not backing up. And I might tell you what it was about in a little bit. Wasn't any, anybody here. But I had to stand up for something that is the single most important issue. And what did I say was the single most important issue? The gospel. If we don't get that right, we're doomed. And everybody we speak to is doomed. Do you think the Jehovah's Witness are out saving souls for Jesus Christ when they knock doors? No, they're condemning those people to hell. They're making them twofold more the child of hell than they were to begin with. They're sealing their doom by making proselytes to their false doctrine. It's the same way with any, any other cult and any other false doctrine. It is the same way. And the truth has to be told. The Father asks for your help to preach this, to do it right, to say it right, to preach it in love, to say only what you want me to say. But Father, I am going to mess it up. I already have. And I know I'll do it again. So, Father, I'm not the one they got to worry about. I'm not the one they got to listen to. You are. And I pray, dear God, that they would listen to you. Make them listen to you like you made me listen to you. Make them do it. They'll thank you for it. 
So, Father, I pray that you bless your word and honor it. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. And now, I want you to think about now what he's saying here. Let's focus on this for a minute. We have devils coming at us. He says, uh, let's see here. Let me look. I don't have it up on the screen here. He says uh, in verse 16, look at verse 16 in, in Ephesians 6. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith. What is that for? Wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, the fiery darts of the wicked. Let me tell you what that really is. You go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. And you have the serpent. What was he doing in Genesis 3? He was speaking. Those are his fiery darts. His words. Had Eve, had she trusted God's word, she would still be in the Garden of Eden right now. Because she would have been eating from the Tree of Life for these 6,000 years. Had she trusted the truth of God's word, she would have never eaten that fruit. And she would be alive right now in the Garden of Eden. So we back up now to what we're talking about. Having your loins girt about with truth. At some point in your walk with God, if He loves you the way He loved me, He will force you to deal with the truth. Not the truth about what Trump's doing or what Biden's doing or what Hollywood's doing or the truth about what the New World Order is doing. The truth about you. He'll make you face you. He will make you, he will force you to recognize the truth about you in that you are a liar. You are filthy. You are a pervert. You're a thief. You're a murderer. You have violated God's commandments and there is His wrath to face as a result of that and you must face that truth. Somebody say amen. Jeremiah 17, 9. Open your Bible to that verse and underline that verse in your Bible. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart. We were talking about the heart in Sunday school. How it is the heart that believes. It is the heart that believes truth or lies. The mind. The mind is the entryway to the heart. The eyes, the ears, the senses. Those are the entryways to the heart. But it is the heart of man. And here's what God says. Not about Charles Manson, Joe Biden, Jeffrey Epstein, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson. Not about them people. About you. The heart. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Now... Is God telling the truth here on you? Because where does your sin come from? Where does your lust come from? Where do your lies come from? Where does your hypocrisy come from? It comes from your heart. Jesus told us in two different places. One place, I think it's Matthew, he said seven things. And Mark, he said 13 things. But he said, these are the things that defile the man because they come out of the heart of man and defile him. Your heart is deceitful. You are a liar. 
If I were to ask, if I were to just point my finger to somebody in this room and ask you to stand up and tell this church everything you've said, thought, and done in this last week, you would lie about it. Am I right? Yeah, you wouldn't tell me. Aren't you glad we don't go to that church? It's our hearts, people. So here's what I'm saying. We have a devil who's throwing fiery darts at us to try to get us away from God and his eternal salvation. His darts are the lies that he tells. If you believe those lies, where are you going? To hell. If you are protected from those lies with the truth, the one truth. If you will be protected. See, I've got, I've got it written up here. Truth is protection. Truth is protection. Let's say that, um, oh, let's see here. Let me pick on, let me pick on Gary. Let's say that Gary got busted for drugs. The cops got all the evidence against him. They go to court. Gary says, number one, it wasn't my car, it wasn't my drugs. I didn't have anything to do with it. I wasn't even there. That wasn't even me. My name's not Gary. That's all a lie, isn't it? So, what are they going to do to him? They're going to throw the book at him. He gets with his lawyer. His lawyer says, I talked to the DA. If you'll admit to such and such, they'll reduce it down to this. And once the judge signs off on it, you're not going to get, you're just going to get probation. You're not going to get any jail time. Everything is going to be okay. And, and after that, they can't come after you again. So in that situation, does the truth protect him? Because even in this country, you can't double jeopardize somebody under the law. Once OJ got off killing his wife, he's off. He even wrote a book about it, everything that he did, and called it, If I Did It. And the guy that was co-writing it with him woke up to the realization he, he murdered his wife. He did. He said, after he published the book, he murdered his wife. I'm telling you, the man murdered his wife. He just told me how he did it. But you see, he can't go to prison for that, can he? Here's one thing I'm telling you. You can lie to everybody else. You cannot lie to God. Because if you do, he will hold you accountable for everything you've ever done. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, once God has forgiven a sin, Gary, can he ever go back on us again for that same sin? Ever. Did you know the Mormon church believes that? They believe that if you recommit a sin, God goes back against you for the previous sins that he at once, at one time, forgave. Is that true? It, does God do that? It's a lie! And I hate gospel lies. I can tolerate some of this stuff that's on the internet, and some of it's laughable. But when you start lying about the gospel, you're going to get me upset. Romans chapter 3, turn there. I got to stick with the scripture, Mike. Romans chapter 3. Verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Now, so let's ask the question. Let's say there's 7.2 billion people on the earth. And let's say that 
billion people on this earth believe we came from monkeys. Does that mean that it's true that we came from monkeys? No. Doesn't matter if 7.19 billion people on this earth believe that we evolved from nothing. That does not make God's word ineffectual and a lie, does it? Man does not override God's truth. Man will have to surrender to God's truth either in this life or the next one. So he says, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Raise your hand if that qualifies you as a liar. Let every man, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So let's say that, let's say that Gary and I are having a conversation. He came in church early one morning, we started talking, and Gary started spouting off, I mean, just ignorant stuff. And I said, Gary, but the Bible says, and I just read scripture to him. Gary said, well, I don't care what the Bible says. This is what I believe. Who's right? Yeah, I'm glad you didn't say me. God is right. Let God be true and every man a liar. Now, so right here in this book is God's truth. And if you think that he left us down here with some of it not in there, you're a liar. You're lying. And I can prove, I can quote the scripture that makes you a liar. I'm telling you, there is one truth in this world and it is in this book and nowhere else but in this book. Somebody say amen. amen. This is God. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So this is God. This is the truth. Now, Psalm 91, turn there. This is the truth as protection. And there's a reason why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this part of it. Let me see if I can find... Let's see. Yeah. I don't know if it's there or not. I know I got it in here. I know I got it in here. Let me read Jeremiah 9 verse 3 while I got it up on the screen. They bend their tongues like their bow for lies, they, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For listen, Look at what your Bible said. Don't even trust your own brother. Trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. For they will deceive everyone his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies, and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. You live in a pat, you live in a world full of lies. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth, in, he layeth his weight. Where is the verse that I'm trying to find? Lord, help me find it. Ah! Isaiah 28. Let me walk over here. Follow me. Because ye have said, we've made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehood, have we hid ourselves. So, Courtney. Liam broke 
the glass in the kitchen. And you know he did it because Gwen, the policewoman, came running to you. Mom, Liam broke the glass in the kitchen. So you go ask Liam, Liam, did you break that glass? It's funny, isn't it, until you break the glass, darling. Now, Liam may tell the truth. He may not. I don't know. But if Liam lies, if Liam says, no, I didn't do it. Why did he say that? Why did he say, I didn't break the glass? Why did he say that? Because he doesn't want to get in trouble. Right? So what do we do? Let me, let me just make this personal. And I'm, I'm just going to look up in this space here, so I'm not looking at anybody. What about when our wife asks us, Honey, what you been doing on your phone? What about, what about when our husband asks us, Honey, who's that you're texting? So I don't know anybody, I don't know anybody that's doing that right now. And the wife is going to say, oh, just a friend. She's made lies her refuge. She's hiding the fact she's talking to some guy that she met on the internet. But she don't want her husband to find it out. So she's going to lie to protect herself. Am I right? Does that happen? Honey, what you been doing on your phone? Nothing, nothing, dear. He's not going to tell her. He's not going to say anything. He's going to lie to protect himself and he's going to make he's going to do exactly what that bible said he's going to make lies his refuge what did david do when he found out that bathsheba was pregnant tried to bring uriah the hittite her husband home one of david's mighty men by the way he's in the list of david's mighty men david's heroes he had him killed. He made lies his refuge. Did God forgive him? But what happened to David's family after that? Well, one son raped his sister. The other son killed that son. And then the son, Absalom, that killed the brother that raped his sister tried to have David killed to take his daddy's own throne. The sword never left his house. And it hasn't left his house in 3,000 years. The sword has not left the house of David. Notice there is no man of the house of David on the throne of Israel right now. I've done that before. I have lied... To cover up my own sins. You didn't, you didn't expect me to say that, did you? Do you want your preacher to lie to you? I've lied before. Been doing it since I was a child. First time we caught Lindsay in a lie. She lied. I don't remember what it was about, but we asked her, did she do this? No. And we knew she did. You know, when you're the only child at the time that can walk. <laughs> Alicia wasn't walking by then, so it was Lindsay. And then I bought a video camera. And I actually videotaped Lindsay stealing Alicia's fruit snacks off the table one night. 
Lindsay, did you do that? No. We had it on tape. Still got the tape. Why did she lie? To make lies her refuge. It says, For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Now, what does God's word say? Be sure your will. And is God's word true? Will you ever... Will God ever let you get away with the things that you're doing? Don't count on it. Now let's go back here. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I, I would ask, and I'm not going to, so don't raise your hand. Have you ever done anything against the law? Probably so. Probably so. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Who's your refuge? Now... Here's what you cannot do. You cannot make lies your refuge and then expect God to be your refuge, can you? You can't hide under two different houses. You cannot hide under lies and you cannot hide under God at the same time. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely, He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. So the snare of the fowler is the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, high places that are out to get us. And if we will tell the truth to God... God absolutely will protect us forever. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. He shall, his what? What does it say there? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth and the truth about you that you told to God, God will protect you. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now starting in verse 5, let's count. How many things do you think you're going to find in verses 5 and 6 that He's going to protect you from? Isn't that something? The terror by night, the arrow that flieth by day, the fiery darts, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So... 1 John 1, 9, turn there. I don't have that on the screen, so you'll have to turn there if you want to see what it says. Let's start in verse 7. 1 John 1, verse 7, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. How many sins? All of them. If we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves and what is not in us? The truth is not in us. So, Courtney, if Liam says, Mom, I broke the cup. How did I raise you? How did I raise you kids? If you tell us the truth,
You're just better off telling the truth. Especially when it comes to God. You're just better off being honest. And not try to cover it up. And I've done that. And I always have to deal with the consequences. Always. So he says, in verse 9, if we confess our sins, God will kill us instantly and burn us like toast in the fires of hell. Did I read that right? No. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and do cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, well, that means that God won't even spank us. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. In fact, you ought to be glad that God spanked you. Because if he did that, that's all he's going to do. Amen? And you ought to be glad when he does it. See, when you put yourself under the truth, and you tell the truth, God will protect you. God will watch over you. And you'll always have the devil standing there going, But God, I saw him do it. I, in fact, I talked him into doing it. I was there when he did it. I opened the door for him. God says, He's confessed it to me, devil. Get thee behind me. You have no part in this. His sins have been forgiven. Turn to Psalm 32. This is one of my favorite psalms. Four things here. In Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2, there are four things here. That's Isaiah. The other psalms. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's two things. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. That's number three. And in whose spirit there is no guile. That's number four. Tell God the truth. God will protect you. Psalm chapter 40. You could look there. I got it up on the screen. Verse 11. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. See, God will never take His truth away from you if you always want to know the truth. Psalm 61, verse 7, He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve Him. No, and I, listen, I could not believe this. Write this down. Look for the words mercy and truth in the same verses together. When you get home looking at pure Bible search software, Type in mercy, and then add a verse, add a word to it, truth. I was stunned at how many times, especially in the book of Psalms, God said mercy and truth, mercy and truth, mercy and truth. What does that tell you? That if you want the truth, God will give you the mercy to go with it. Even though you don't deserve it. He'll forgive you. He'll not ever hold it against you. But you have to tell the truth. You have to start being honest. And the first person you have to start being honest with is you. Quit believing your own lies. Proverbs 14, 22. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth... See, there it is again. Mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall... I heard somebody with an S. I heard somebody say set. 
I was waiting for you. It's make, not set. You know what the difference is? You got a bird in a cage. The bird is so used to living in the cage that when you open the door, he won't even go out of it. We put a gate, that gate in our house, Courtney. You know, them stupid dogs are so used to that gate being there that we can leave it open and they'll just they'll run up to it and go. They're so stupid, they don't know the gates open and they can go through it. They're dogs, of course, they're, I hate them. But they're so used to being held in bondage that they don't know that they're free. Isn't that something? To the dogs, we can't even open the front door and let them outside because they're so used to wait, waiting for them to hook the leash on them to take them outside. They won't go outside unless the leash is on them. And you know, sad to say, that's how some people we know are. They're so used to living in bondage that even when you open the door, they won't go through it. Isn't that something? So what's the difference in being set free and being made free? Being made free is God not only opens the door, but He reaches in and pulls you out. Now you're free. And you never knew what it was like until He finally made you free. And would you ever go back to that cage? No. You never would. Um, I'm going to stop right here. And tell God thank you, because I had some really, really mean things to say that I did not say. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to say them. Because I'm not done preaching this. But let me say this before we close. Somebody this week attacked the gospel during my program I got a call from somebody in this church Thursday night Pastor Mike do you read the comments after your deal I said no I never read them I'm, I said, I'm too busy working on the next thing I'm doing I just don't look back and read what everybody thinks about what I said and she commenced to tell me what somebody had said. And I wasn't even talking about a particular subject. And I went and looked it up. And sure enough, somebody had made a comment that to me directly attacked the gospel of grace through faith. Let me just leave you with this should men dress like men should men it's in our nature to have short hair right should women dress like women are the things we shouldn't watch on TV are the things on the radio we shouldn't listen to are there things that we should do in our life that as Christians, it becomes us as Christians to do them. Does any one of those things make us saved? Not one. They may be the evidence that God has worked in your life. But let me tell you about the man, my brother-in-law. Who didn't have really a lot of time to quit all the things that he'd really been doing in his life. He didn't really have time to make a complete turnaround in his life and show the sanctification that was already abiding in him. 
But he died and went to heaven. Of that, I have absolutely no doubt. Do you know why? Because he has Jesus to save him. And Jesus saved him. And he's in heaven right now. The thief on the cross died a convicted thief. Did he have any time to change what was in his life? Where is he at right now? You judge no man before the time the Bible says. And somebody directly attacked the gospel of salvation by grace through faith. And I went to them privately and told them, I will not allow statements like this to be made. You don't go against the gospel and think I'm going to be okay with it. Because I never will be. Never. Let's stand to our feet. If you're here this morning, you have any sins, tell them to God. Not me. If you're here this morning and you've been running, or if you're listening to me online and you've been running from the truth, I pray God catches you and traps you like He did Israel, like He's done to the people here, like He's done with me. That God will lead you into a trap that you absolutely cannot get out of. That will be a manifestation of God's love and mercy on you. That He is willing to save you while He destroys your enemies. But it takes truth. Stop making lies your refuge. It should have been proven to you already. That your sin will always find you out. Father, we come before you today. And I thank you, dear God, for anything that I said that was from heaven. And Father, I sincerely repent of anything that I said that was not. It is difficult to separate my flesh from the truth of the Word of God while I'm preaching sometimes. So I'm not perfect. But I know you are and your Word is. And Father, may everything that you said today out of your Word abide continually in the hearts of those who've heard it today. Father, there's somebody, there is somebody bound to be who's heard today this message and they have been running from the truth. God, would you trap them so that they can't get out and then leave them no choice but to fall upon your mercy and your truth. So that you can save them and destroy their sins. Father, I just pray, dear God, that you'd bless each and every heart. Bless each and every one, dear God, that needs conviction, that needs the truth. I pray, dear God, that you would speak it to them. Speak it to me. I need it. Deliver us, dear God, from the lies that surround us everywhere the lies of neighbors the lies of churches the lies of the internet the lies of the television the lies the lies the lies that are everywhere god draw us out and separate us from those lies so that we abide only in truth forgive us of our sins 
Bless your people today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless.